This is Digital Scouting Calling. Trends from around the world. From Paris, France. Seoul. From Dubai, UAE. Namekang. Great. Cool. And your host, from the rainy but beautiful city of Hamburg, Germany, Dr. Robin Kira. What I found interesting is really that we have different layers of discussions. Um, so that you have the meta, meta movement, that's a global meta movement of all the successful tech companies changing the, or actually adapting or um, and, and reacting to the, to the change of demand or triggering this change of demand, but at least managing it better than incumbents in so many other industries. And we see uh, the expectations that it, yeah. Yeah, I would also say that uh, it's changing the way of uh, the, the way we demand insurance products, but it, it's also changed the way we 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 focus on insurance products because uh, we don't um, uh, we don't use insurance products anymore just for the insurance products. We integrate the insurance products within our daily life. Well, we should, and, uh, should, but I don't see this anywhere. So my main point I actually um, um, make is if you look at the most successful companies in the last 20 years, there's all tech companies, more or less, an exam, some ex regional ex uh, exemption, but in general, they're all tech companies. Why did they win? Yeah. Because they give the customer products and services they like and deserve. And in most cases, by the way, they give it to the end customer for free. Um, and most of these companies became daily companions of their customers. I mean, look at this thing, it's 24 seven, it arm length reach uh, from myself. I have voice standing there, and if I now say Alexa, it's probably going to say, hey, Robin, how are you? Um, so the, my main point here is, and if you look at the, how, how traditional companies, if it's insurance or um, beyond, actually doesn't matter, um, work, they don't, they are not the part in the daily life of their customers, but I think you need to become this. And I strongly believe as an insurance company or another company, you need to become a tech company, a tech driven, a data driven company that provides a lot of uh, services to the end consumer. Why? But why are the insurance companies actually, um, why could they do this? We know so much, our industry knows so much about the customer, about probabilities, about risk, about the accidents, about health, about life situations, the different life situations, about retirement, financial planning. Why are we not giving this knowledge to our customers? And what I always say, and then they ask me, what do you think about the incumbents? I say, yes, a few are doing something that I don't see any single one in the Western world actually doing a radical shift towards a tech company, a data-driven tech company. Well, how about you guys? So, I have seen, I, I know a, a group that is out of Germany only. They're quite aggressive right now um, in terms of acquiring tech companies um, uh, within the space and building up their, uh, you know, their weaponry, I'm, I must say, and bringing up that, you know, building up that strong foundation yeah. uh, and going towards tech completely. However, one thing, I mean, you have just touched upon a very important and a very critical point here. World is changing. Insurance industry is undergoing a paradigm shift. This paradigm shift is basically taking insurance companies towards becoming a lifestyle proposition and just becoming an insurer. Yeah. Why is that happening? Let's understand that. Today's customer, all of us, all three of us and everyone who's listening out to us right now, loves personalization, right? And we love more and more personalization as we speak, which means we are heading towards hyper-personalization. Yeah. Hyper-personalization means that I need more data from the user. How do I acquire that more data from the user? Only when I'm basically integrating my model, my proposition, my ecosystem with the lifestyle and the lives of the user. Now this comes in with multiple lifestyle propositions that, that I'm offering. That you as an insurer need to think not first about yourself, but this means that you need to think as an insurer first about the customer. And this is, has not happened yes. over here the last 400 years. I'm but if once this happens, the amount of data, the thing is that this is where you need to track the code. You yeah. need to come in with a proposition that is highly relevant with the user. Once you crack the code and you're offering a proposition that enables you to integrate with the lifestyle of the user, that may be in the form of one proposition, that may be also in the form of multiple ecosystem 
based propositions via which you are able to offer some sort of value to the user and against that you are able to acquire some data based on that data you are able to come up with some level of hyper personalization and that then enables you not to just basically go towards or stick towards hyper personalization then there is no then i would say i mean the sky is the limit then i mean even beyond that then you can do far more with that data so coming down to this overall yeah. discussion is that you will not insurers will not be just an insurance company no. in the coming i i'm foreseeing this not even 2 years from now okay okay let's just count this 2 years from now you will see a shift from not just from an insurance company you you will end up becoming a lifestyle proposition you should because already because already you're bringing in i'm just going to give a small example so what is small thing that lemonet did was what they basically uh, came up with the behavioral aspect of the user by adding the element of charities what did that do that basically made the customer feel better right mm -hmm. so it's not integrating with the lifestyle but it's basically working with the behavioral science here yeah. that it's making the customer feel better right So imagine if this proposition is blended in with a lifestyle proposition, and that enables the customer to engage more with the platform. So, so as an friends. insurer, I would do these things. So, how is the situation, friends? And what do you think? Uh, would that help the insurers there too? Do you see this also as a solution, or what is your take on that? Um, the, the question of the question of data is uh, is really important, but um, we have. something really um uh more important in friends than in any other part of the world is the the confidentiality of data and confidentiality of uh, of the the information that we give to other uh, parties um, i i'm not saying about gdpr or yeah. the new regulations uh, that started this year because it's something that is it's is uh, deeper in our mind Uh, and we are not ready to give data to have hyper uh, hyper personalization we would like that but we are not ready to give some data to to, to the customers not ready or the companies are not ready both Bo both because when you see that um uh, you you can't in france you can provide some uh, health insurance uh asking people Uh, for their uh, data of uh, health in the past 10 years you can't you can't request that from your customer because they won't give it to you uh, but that's about lifestyle yeah. data so for example what do you like what kind of movies do you watch uh, do you have a yes. child or not and, and and this is something and this is the paradox in that because if you if you track their data on internet any no one cares if you track the data that they are looking for uh for the the the, the words uh, cancer or aids or i don't know which uh, disease uh, what should you you search on on the uh, on internet or in google no one cares for that because no one understands what is happening behind but if you if you do like many insurance companies are doing right now is putting paper just asking you uh, okay what is your state of uh, of health right now in order to get some data and to to personalize the data and to personalize personalize the products uh, no one will answer to you and this is because i agree with i i i just like to add over here to to joe's point that i completely agree the customers are not going to give that but how do you make the customer give that is a question so yeah. we as insurers that is where the shift is going to come in so I would not trust right now with the current state or the state probably year back to give my information out unnecessarily. However, when I like something, when something is relevant to me, when something or some proposition is talking to me the way I want it to talk to me, it's me. It represents me. It offers me something I like. It offers me some value of some sort. Then I would be comfortable to share that information. Yes, uh, yes, I fully agree with that. But if you this, what you describe is exactly the model of vitality. Uh, in South Africa, it works really well because you you put with uh, outside of the vitality product, you you put some premium service, 
uh, you were uh, you will have a good level because you deserve it. Uh, okay, you have all of this, but vitality in France does not work. Just because we are not ready to, we don't want uh, to have the, the the impression that the insurer know too too many things about us. We could go away from, for example, we could go away, for example, from the health insurance um, area because it's a very sensitive one. And uh, yes, I think also depending on the markets, there are chances for things or not. Um, technically, seen um, there are um, there's, there are opportunities to work on models where you have the, the big data or the data of the customer here, you have the insurer here, and you actually have a middle layer, a trusted middle layer, that um, does not give the raw data to the insurer who delivers value in the daily life of the customer, but just triggers and snippets of it, and you can control it. Hey guys, it would help us a lot if you could hit the subscribe button down there and to make us also grow here on YouTube. Thank you very much.